We're back. Yes, yeah, second week of God's supply chain. And I promise you this, it's going to be good. Oh, man, what a time we're going to have together. Whew. We're Pastors George and Terry Pearsons. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Here we are, Terry, week two of God's supply chain. I think it's wonderful. It's helped my faith just to hear you talk about it and to go the scripture on it. And the reason we have to keep doing it, even though we studied about this and we've been right. preaching about it, right. we still go over it because the world is yelling about it all day, every day, wherever <laughs> you right. turn. Yeah. And if it wasn't only that, you go to the grocery store and there are empty shelves. I've been seeing empty shelves for quite a while. And I place an order for something and it's not there. It'll be four months, five months, six right, months. Right. Some things we've checked into that even told us that it could be a year or two or three. But God has supplied everything we needed. That's right. We're thankful for that. So His Word works. His Word works. Faith in His Word works. Yep. Yep. And that's why we're here, to share and, these wonderful things with you. And He is the ultimate supplier and He is the one who provides for us, even in the midst of the most difficult situations, the most impossible situations. That is what He specializes in. He is a specialist in doing the impossible when it looks impossible. Did you ever think about this? Everything God does, He's a specialist in. Well, that's true. He is not a generalist. <laughs> in anything. Well, yeah. I guess He's a generalist at everything, but He, boy, well, he, 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 does, he, knows, he watches the big picture, Yeah. but He, knows things about the tiniest that we haven't even uncovered yet. Yeah, that's true. He created it all. He did it all. So he was the founder of it. He, yes, the founder and CEO. The CEO of it. <laughs> and so those of you that are interested in having the notes that Terry and I are working from, you can go to kcm.org, click onto the picture of Terry and myself, and it will take you to those notes. And really the notes that that we've been doing ever since we started these notes and these outlines. And I recommend highly, especially pastors, ministers, you download these. These, these are pulpit ready. These are, these are ready to go. And you can really study them, add to them, and do a series in your church about these topics. And so what we're talking about here, and let me read the... Oh, I gotta say something about that. What? Okay. okay. So the way we've worked <laughs> on these outlines is that George prepared them because he's been preaching on this in, in our church, Eagle Mountain, for a while. So he prepared the outlines and then I went back through and revelation is coming to me on top of what he has. Mm -hmm. So when you get these outlines, that same thing will happen to you because the revealer is on the inside of you right. if you're born again. Right. And so you can look through these notes, add other scriptures as they come to you. Then you could go back and watch the broadcast again or perhaps ones you've missed with the notes. And boy, that, that'll really help you yeah. get it, use your faith for it and then you're not just parroting something, you preach in Revelation. Exactly, okay. exactly. You may continue. Okay, what I want to do is pick up from where we were last week and I wanna give you just a little bit of information about what we talked about. If you did not see last week, you can always go back to the website, you can look at them. The supply chain bottlenecks around the world have caused record shortages of many products that the American consumers and worldwide actually consumers are, are used to having readily available. That includes food, household goods, electronics, automobiles, uh, supplies of every kind, including baby formula. Prices are also increasing on goods and services, including gas at the pump. Experts have warned that problems will likely get worse before they get better. But God. But God. But God. So we've been talking, Terry, about being separated from the world economy. Because we are submitted to another economy, we have our supply that comes from our Father in heaven. Every good gift, every full, 
perfect and good gift comes down from the Father of lights. And we read, for instance, Colossians 1.14. It says in the Amplified Translation, the Father has delivered and drawn us to Himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness, and He's transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. So we've been transferred. We've been transferred out of the world system and we've been transferred into the kingdom of God's system. We are no, we, we, sh we should not be subject to the times that we are in. Don't we don't have to be. We don't have to be. But we have to get over under the, the, the kingdom of heaven's system. Right. If you don't do that, then the world will just sweep you away. It's not, this is a big difference between choosing and effort and faith than just, well, gee, I wish it would be that way or just dropping on you that way. We are in this world and as long as you're in it, you've, you've got a fight on your That's hands. Right. But the fight is a good fight. The fight of faith is a good fight. And so we, we have to make that choice, make those decisions and with that goes the effort. Okay. So in Christ, we no longer live under the dominion, the rule, the control, the influence of whatever direction the world system is going if we walk by faith if, and if we get the Word of God down on the inside of us to the place where we can't even think lack. I remember somebody saying that to me one time. You can get to such a place to renew your mind in the Word of God that you can't even think lack. There's so, a scripture and it just, I don't remember the reference, George, but it says, the, I think it's Proverbs. It says, the thoughts of the righteous oh, tend only to plenteousness. That's good. Yep. The thoughts of the righteous tend only to pl plenteousness. Yeah, that's a, great, that's a great scripture. So today, what we're talking about is something so crucial and so important to know about this topic, and that is the fact that we are redeemed from the curse of lack. We're redeemed. We're redeemed. And it says, Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And I like here, in the Greek, the word redeemed means ransomed, bought back, and this one especially, Terry, rescued from loss. It's like taking something to the pawn shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have been redeemed from the devil's pawn shop. Yes. <laughs> We've been, we have been good. bought back <clears throat> what was good. lost. If you don't redeem, then it's lost to you. <clears throat> yeah. And Jesus, the price he paid was more than enough right. to buy us back out of the pawn, the pawn shop owner's hands. The price was enough. Yeah, in that pawn shop, yeah. in that kingdom, yeah. in the kingdom of the pawn shop, there is lack, there's poverty, there's sickness, disease, and spiritual death, and Jesus redeemed us from all those. Praise God. So when we're talking about the curse of the law, Jesus redeemed us from the curse so that we could walk in the blessing of Abraham. So we find that in Deuteronomy chapter 28. That's such a wonderful scripture, scriptures in that chapter. Uh, the first part of it, is the blessing. Second part of it are the curses. But it's, it's good, <coughs> excuse me, to read the curses because you can find out what you're redeemed from or what, what you no longer have to walk in. Yeah, be bound to. So the curse of the law, and I just, I mean, w we could spend a week talking about the curses that we've been redeemed from, but, but where provision is concerned, uh, Deuteronomy 28, and verse 30, the New Living Translation, this is the curse of the law. You will build a house, but someone else will live in it. That's foreclosure, foreclosure. repossession. Yep, exactly. Verse 38, New Living Translation, you will plant much harvest, you will plant much, but harvest little. For locusts will eat your crops. Uh, uh, Habakkuk talks about your, your pockets will have holes in them. <laughs> So the money comes in, but there's something eating it up. The washing machine broke, the AC went out, the, the yep. dog has to go to the vet again and again. The <laughs> kids have this, the school that, the car's broken. 
the taxes went up, the groceries are more expensive. And so the money comes in, but there are things constantly draining, draining it. and pulling, pulling yeah. it out. Yeah. And no matter how much more comes in, the hole in the pocket is still there. That's the curse. That's the curse. The blessing mm -hmm. is there's more than enough money come in to take yep. care of all those That's things. Right. But the curse says no matter what comes in, there'll always be more need than you have supply. More, more month than there is money. <laughs> That's right. In verse 48, New Living Translation, you will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. <sighs> lacking in everything. Everything that's never quite enough. And some things maybe you don't have any at all, but always not enough. And yet so many times I hear Christians who are using their faith, who are following the blessing plan that God's laid out, and they'll say, I don't know how we did that. How many times have we had that in our life, George, yeah. that we yeah. say, I don't know where that money came from. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we paid that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we bought that. How did we do this? We're not in debt. How did we get where we are? Yeah. How did we wind up with this? I don't really know. We didn't steal it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Didn't and, rob. No, and <clears throat> nope. didn't sell one of the children to get it. No. So there was there were times it was thought, but no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, <laughs> no. I'm Whoa. kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We can always edit that out. We, yeah, we could. But the point is that the blessing of the Lord made a way when you looked around and not only was there no way, you don't even know how he did it. So that's the opposite. So, and, and we can, like I said, we could go into great depth on the curse of the law. See what you're redeemed from. You are redeemed from lacking in everything. We're that. redeemed from that. We're rescued from that. But the blessing of Abraham and we see here in verse 2 of Deut Deuteronomy 28, it says, And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. I love that. that you know, the thing that the scripture is always doing, God's very clear. A lot of people have questions. Well, why did this happen? And why that? Well, the Bible's very clear. Right here, he said, because you obey. Yeah. What does it mean to obey? Is this... We get the wrong idea. We're not puppies and he's not giving us a treat because we stood up and danced just right. No, it's because when you follow him, it works. Mm, right. When you follow him, right. it works that way. It works for you. It's like, like working a piece of machinery. When your instructor says, do this first, do this next, do this next, right. don't get them out of order. Right. Follow the instruction, follow the leader, follow the person who's been doing this before you, or when you obey or when you follow the instructions, it'll work. If you don't obey, if you disregard the instructions, yes. you decide to do it your yes. own way, what you wind <laughs> up is the machine, sometimes it doesn't work as well, other times it just won't work at all. It just all. won't work. Yeah, I liken it to you know, walking under the blessing of Abraham and that obedience, you've got an umbrella over you that's right. protecting you from the downpour. But you take that away and you're walking under that curse. Yeah. And that's what happens. So we have to be obedient. If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You will. So because you obey the voice of the Lord, all these blessings will come on you and overtake you and you obey the voice of the Lord and he'll always position you for prosperity. He will always position you for abundance. He always causes us to triumph in Christ. Exactly, exactly. And again, we could spend time going through these verses about the blessing of Abraham, but there's one in particular that I wanted you to see. And in the, in the King James Version, in verse 11, let me go back there, it says, and the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Mm. Now, I really like the Amplified translation of this one. I really caught hold of this, uh, especially when the ministry was going through one of its difficult times financially, and we were believing God to get out of it. And I got to this scripture, and in the Amplified translation, it says, the Lord will make you have a surplus of prosperity. What is a surplus? Extra. <laughs> it's extra. Uh, 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 you know, you go to one of these military surplus stores and uh -huh. it's just jam packed full, overflowing 
With extra. With extra. So the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. You know, I hadn't thought about it before just this moment, George, but a surplus of prosperity, it's, that doesn't say a surplus <clears throat> of stuff. Mm. Prosperity yes. in itself, it, let's think of it this way. Yeah. Prosperity is a state of being. Prosperity <clears throat> is like, the uh, well, the, the Spirit of God is prosperity. He, he, it's person. You will have a surplus. When you have prosperity working in your life, it's doing the work. Yeah. It, it's, it's got provision happening. Mm. It doesn't mean that there's never opportunity or challenge, but surplus yeah. reaches out and meets the challenge. Yes. Surplus takes care of it. You know, surplus is there. All I have to do is reach for it. Yes. One other thing, I, I, I know we're really kind of adding to our outline here today, but it says that, um, what, what was that you just read about good? Oh, and the Lord shall make you plenteous. Plenteous in, in goods. goods. Plenteous in yes. goods. Mm -hmm. So that does sound like things, but how about this? It makes you plenteous in goods instead of bads. <laughs> like instead that. of bads. Instead of bads. Instead of goods, goods <laughs> not just in, in yeah. physical things, but good. goods, lots of good, yeah, yeah. good things yes. happening. Good this, good yep. that, good here, instead of, oh, another bad thing, another yep. bad, and bad stuff's coming. Bad stuff, you can't change the fact that bad is out there. Yeah. But Jesus said, don't be worried about that. I've empowered you to overcome. Yes, I've overcome. That's right. So there's <clears throat> more good at work and it will swallow up the bad, slap that Praise bad God. around and make it, make the, make the bad that's work right. for, for your benefit. When you walk in the blessing of Abraham, mm -hmm. you actually de-bad. Do bad things. <laughs> oh, my English teacher's not watching. <laughs> <clears throat> the New Living Translation says, the Lord will lavish you Whew. with good things. He will lavish you with good things. The NIV says with abundant, abundant uh, prosperity. And I mean, you can go through, I'm looking at verse eight, the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and everything that you set your hands to. Um, verse 12, the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure. The New Living Translation says his rich treasury. Mm -hmm. I like, I think it's the Message Bible that says he will open unto you the sky vaults of heaven. That's a good one. So you can, you can go through that. You can go through here in the, in the book, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and find out what the blessing of the Lord is, what you've been redeemed from, and what you've been redeemed into. It even covers national things. I think that's important right now because yes. of the global right. economic right, right. Uh, supply, <clears throat> money, unrest, craziness. Uh, but you can go through and look in Deuteronomy 28, and I especially like it in Amplified Classic, and identify in the curse national situations and stand for our nation, but those things also affect you. Yeah. If the nation's going through yeah. an economic yeah. crisis, well, then it affects us and right. we, have to, we have to master over it and we can stand <clears throat> on that scripture. So I want to get to this last part here and we only have five minutes. So Terry, we're going to have to do a lightning round. Okay, I'll be quiet. Uh, no, <laughs> you can join me. <clears throat> um, uh, we lack nothing. Say it. We lack nothing. We lack nothing. We lack nothing. And you have to have that mindset that there is no lack in the kingdom of God. There is no shortage in the kingdom of God. And so I found these scripture verses that I wanted to give to you. And this one, this is Psalm 23, 1 in the Amplified Translation. The Amplified I so classic. like this one, Amplified Classic. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. Yeah, see that, that's, wow. that's, that's food and supply. Yeah. It's direction and guidance mm -hmm. and it's protection. Yeah. I mean, that covers, and protection on any yeah. level. Everything. I said I wouldn't talk, sorry, keep going. Everything. No, you can talk. I like it when you talk. Oh, thank you. Psalm 84, uh, 11 in the Terry Pearson's, no, that's the, the Passion, Passion Translation. Translation. <laughs> <laughs> it says, those who walk along his paths with integrity, will never lack one thing they need, for he provides it all. 
Don't you like that? I do. Oh, that's such a great scripture. And here, Psalm 34, 9 and 10, this is the New Living Translation. Fear the Lord, you godly people, or honor the Lord, you godly people, for the, you godly people, for those who fear him or honor him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Mm. You can talk. That's all right. Go ahead. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7, New Living Translation. During these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You have lacked nothing. All that time in the desert, they lacked nothing. They, were, they had full provision. And I think back, even in our own lives, even, I mean, we're celebrating this month 45 years of marriage. And, and here, during these 45 years, the Lord has been with us and we've lacked nothing. You know, we've, we've come a little close kind of to close, that. Yeah, but. We've, we've, <laughs> but you know, even in, in that, think about this, there were times when we thought we were lacking, mm. but then we weren't. Then we weren't lacking. Yep. And so the lack was moved, moved out of the way. Yeah. And I'm sure there were a lot of times we thought we were lacking, but I can't even remember what they were. Because mm -mm. I don't mm -mm. have, that same lack didn't stick with us. Yeah. Well, like, you, like the scripture that you quoted about the, the thoughts of the righteous tend only uh -huh. to plenteousness. The plenteousness. Yes. Think about that. Yeah. If we, some people, George, be married 45 years and always live in a state of lack, mm. but we haven't. No. We haven't. No. God's faithful. He is faithful. Um, two more scriptures. Luke twenty two thirty five. This is the ESV translation. Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said to them, when I sent you out, with no money bag or knapsack or sandals. Did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. <laughs> Sometimes the Lord will tell you to put something aside because he wants to bring new to you. You have to make a way mm -hmm. for a new supply. Yeah. Sometimes the new doesn't come on yep. top of what you have. You move that out of the way. Well, our children can, can talk about the fact that you know, there was a time when they'd come home from school and we gave away the furniture. All the furniture we was sold gone. the furniture. I had, lawn, I had lawn chairs in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> then there was one time they came home and we found out we'd given our house away. But you know what? God yeah. has always prospered us. He has prospered us. We never slept on the street. <laughs> so here's a scripture, not for you, but for me. Psalm 37, 25. I was young and now I am old. That's right. <laughs> now this part's for you. Yet... I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. You know, that begging bread, that's a covenant. That's covenant mm -hmm. language. It's covenant Begging bre bread meaning I don't have anybody to have covenant with, yep. like communion, but I've never, my children will never be without a covenant. That's right. Exactly. Wow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you that you are a God of abundance. abundance. You have full supply for us. We lack nothing in these times that we are in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How are all the shelves empty? Drive two hours away for baby formula? How are we gonna afford the gas? It's time to get your eyes off your limited resources and get your faith on the source of your unlimited supply. Get the God is My Source package by Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons and find out how God provides everything you need. In fact, God not only wants to meet your needs, He wants you living in the abundance of His blessing. Use the study guide to follow along with the daily audio lessons and take notes. Track your faith goals in the mini book and keep it with you as a powerful pocket-sized scripture reference. Immerse yourself in 70 scriptures about God as your provider. You're a member of the family of God and your heavenly Father has good gifts for you. Renew your mind by the Word of God until you are fully persuaded that God is your source. Request your free God is My Source package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. 
You can thrive in every situation because Jesus is your source and the Word of God is your supply. This free offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. It really does take total immersion. If you are serious, a serious student of the Word of God and you're believing God for results in your life to be able to take the materials that we're offering to you absolutely free and just digest them, just allow them to get down on the inside of you. And in this uh, package that we have for you, I want to make something mention to you, something about this little booklet. And listen to what is in it. Just hear this. It says, um, back of it says, read the 70 God is my source scriptures every day. Read it, each scripture and say it out loud. Uh, follow the write it assignments in terms of writing down the victories in your life, then log every financial and provisional miracle that you receive. When you see it work, it will encourage your faith. So this is really a workbook that you can carry with you, and it's got wonderful scriptures about the fact that God is our source. So you can order this. Go ahead. You can go online, kcm.org. Tell them um, the whole package, and, though, George. Well, I mean, here's the, the, the study. This is a series that Gloria and I did with all the study notes. Cool. And so this, this is going to really change your life when it comes to knowing God as your supplier and your provider. Yep, if you're serious about it. If you're serious about you know, it. The, the things of God are daily, yep. every day. Yeah. His mercies are new every day because the devil's got a new strategy every day. So we, we want to feed our faith. And that's why I want to talk to you for a moment about the faith to faith daily devotional. Now, these little devotionals, they're not very long. You can see right in here, that's, yeah, look at the monitor. You can see that some are really short, but I'm gonna tell you how powerful this is. Recently, we gave it to a man that we met, and he's a lawyer, and about two weeks later, he called me and said, thank you for giving me that little book. It has changed my life. Mm. Now, you can get this sent to your email every morning. Just go to kcm.org and you can sign up for that, or you can go to the shopping cart and buy one for yourself. But either way, this faith to faith is gonna be a blessing to your life. Until next time, remember this. God, God loves you, you we, we love, love you, you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls kcm.org your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free. You have a free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org notes. Welcome to kcm.org, your study center for victory. Click Start Here to unlock answers on where to begin your faith journey. You'll find links to our most popular content and an overview of what kcm.org can do for you. Start there and don't stop exploring. Find a Bible-believing church home with the Find a Church feature. At kcm.org, we want to answer your questions, encourage you daily, and help lead you on the path to victory in your family, finances, emotional, and physical health. With things to watch, read, pray, and speak, kcm.org meets you where you are.